So this is a video about damage reflection in Titan Quest. And as you can see by the background footage, this mechanic is absurdly overpowered. And it can be even more overpowered now with Ragnarok. So I'm going to talk about what Reflect is, when Reflect applies, how to scale reflected damage, and some build and gear ideas for different characters who can apply this mechanic. I wanted to do this video because I started to make my own build guide for a Reflect character I made. It was an Evoker. And I decided with all the testing I've done on this and, and all the crazy mechanics behind it, I could probably fill up a whole 30 minute video just talking about it. And since I couldn't find any well-written guides online discussing Reflect, I decided I could make a worthy contribution to dispel all the hidden mechanics and how this thing works. I know 90% of my own assumptions were completely wrong. So it should be very useful even for the most veteran of veterans. But don't worry, we're going to go over everything from what Reflect is all the way down. So even if you're a novice, you should be able to glean at least some information from this. The rest you can pick up, hopefully through osmosis, in watching the video and then playing around with it yourself. So first, what is reflected damage? Well, if you attack an enemy, or for the sake of this video, an enemy attacks you, a proportion of that damage will be reflected back to the enemy. Their own damage will be reflected back. And this comes from multiple sources. Most commonly you'll find the affix X% percent damage reflected. So that could be found on prismatic amulets or, for instance, Athena's mirrored shield has 44% damage reflected somewhere around there. That's going to reflect 44% of the damage enemies deal to you back to them. It's not going to prevent that 44 damage from happening. You're still going to take it in full, but they're also going to take it. That's how it works. It can also come in percentage form, like a probability. So the ice scale gear, for instance, it's going to be front and center with the build discussions in this video. It's a new Ragnarok piece. It's actually a set. You can find four pieces. Well, it's not a set. It's just monster and frequency in multiple slots. That reflect comes written as 15% chance of 350% damage reflected. So there's a chance you'll reflect an even greater amount of damage. 350 is absurd, by the way. This is the reason why it's so overpowered. There's a lot of reasons why it's so overpowered. I'm getting ahead of myself. And the last place you can find this is on uh, a proc. If you take damage, there's a chance you'll gain this massive buff to your damage reflected. Instead of 44 static on Athena's Mirror Shield, you might get, I think it's 350 also, maybe 300, whenever Arcane Mirror procs. And the last high-level thing I want to talk about with Reflect is that it's not Retaliate. That's a completely different mechanic. Retaliate is when there's a flat amount of damage. You'll see that when it's written on gear. Some flat amount of damage is done to the attacker whenever there's a hit that happens. It's not based on their damage at all. You'll see it in Grim Dawn. They have their own scalers for it, like, you know, plus 100% to retaliation damage or something like that. There's nothing like that in Titan Quest, but it's the same mechanic. In Titan Quest, they scale it with player level. I think that was a change in Anniversary Edition. I saw a dev post about this, so it's I'm not making it up. Um, every time your character levels up, they get a damage bonus to retaliate. This is not retaliate. You do not get a damage bonus to your Reflect when you level up. I tested that myself. And in fact, I've tested pretty much everything I'm going to say here very thoroughly by myself. Not going to claim I got everything exactly right, but I was very thorough. I would say 98% confidence. So then to get more advanced, all damage can be reflected. Doesn't matter if it's spell damage, melee damage, range damage damage over time, all of it can be reflected. The only caveats are that you cannot reflect reflected damage. That would cause an infinite loop. You cannot reflect retaliated damage, again, an infinite loop. And you cannot reflect environmental damage. Environmental damage is an odd concept. Basically, it's damage that doesn't come from a monster as its source. So a good distinction is, you know the Act 2 Telkin, how he does that Eye of Raw sort of sunbeam ability? If you stand in it, you take a ton of fire damage. You might think that's environmental, but I tested that and it's not. You can stand in it with Reflect, and you'll just massacre the Telkin as long as you can survive. 
So that is not environmental damage. However, if you're fighting Kron on the river sticks, you'll notice those projectiles come from the ocean and they land on the bridge and hit you, and also the water geysers. Those do not reflect. Those are environmental damage. The source is the water, the source is the bridge. It's not the monster. So you cannot deal damage with those by standing in them. But overall, it's easy to see that 90%, 99%, whatever, of the damage in this game can be reflected. Now, if you're wondering about the reflect base, it's based on the non-critical enemy damage with their own modifiers, it's raw damage, and it's pre-mitigation. This is the thing that makes it really, really overpowered, is, what do I mean by pre-mitigation? I mean the raw damage they deal before your defenses take place, all of your armor, your resists, and everything like that, that's the damage that gets reflected, the raw damage. And to say it in a different way, instead of saying pre-mitigation, if you've watched my defense build guide, the advanced defense mechanics guide, I should say, you'll know the concept of the damage order, or if you come from Grim Dawn, you're probably aware of the damage order. Another way to say pre-mitigation is that it, it ignores the damage order completely. This is the part that all of my assumptions were wrong on, I'm going to have video support for all of my claims here, so you'll be able to see exactly how it works. But the damage is pre-mitigation, it ignores the damage order. But don't worry, that doesn't mean that in order to do a lot of damage you have to be naked. This is also an insane part to it, but you're safe to scale all of your defenses. All of your defenses, and it won't impact the reflected damage at all. They still take the pre-mitigated reflect damage in full, even though you yourself are mitigating all of their source damage. So you'll take like nothing, and they'll take their own damage in full, or you know, at 350% or in stacking 350% all the way to 1200%. It gets insane. Anyway, so let's start at the top of the damage order, which is chance to dodge and chance to avoid projectiles. I'm happy to report, and as stupid as this sounds, even if you dodge the attack or avoid the projectile, they still take that raw, unmitigated damage in full, even though you don't take any damage at all. This fixes the sort of perceived anti-synergy in the ice scale gear. It gives damage reflect, but then also provides some amount of chance to avoid projectiles. That is not an anti-synergy. That's actually pretty nice, because it doesn't matter if you avoid the projectile, they still take the damage. Second, of course, is defensive ability. So once you've resolved the whole chance to dodge thing, it goes to DA next in the damage order. Well, if you have a very high DA, then enemies will deal less damage to you in melee. But as you can see, when I'm toggling my defensive ability from, I think, 500 to about 2,000 on this character, it does not change the reflected damage that the enemy takes. This is a good and bad thing. One, it means that you can scale a lot of DA without impacting the reflect damage. But it also means that if an enemy crits you, it has no impact on the reflected damage. They don't take more damage if a melee creature crits you. It doesn't work like that. To me, this is okay, because from my own practical experience, if you're going to get killed by anything on a Reflect character, it's going to be melee creatures. They do by far the most damage in the endgame, in Legendary, especially in Act 5. So having a high DA is a great way to counter that damage. And since you can't Reflect critical damage anyway, it's not going to harm your damage. It's only going to aid in your survival. Next is Armor. You can probably see a trend here, but armor does not affect the reflected damage. That means you're free to stack as much armor as you want. Any physical damage that's done to you will be, again, taken back, uh, pre-mitigated in terms of raw damage back to the attacker. Resists. Of course, resists are a huge part of your own mitigation. You can resist 80% of damage, so you would think that if an enemy attacked you with fire damage and you resisted 80%, you'd only reflect 20% back at them. That's not true. You can have full resists and you still, again, reflect the unmitigated raw damage back to your attacker. I think one of the more interesting things is the next part of the damage order, which is absorb. I'm talking about percent absorb here. So if you absorb, if you're in Colossus form or if you have any form of absorb percentage at all, Primal Chaos Scroll, 
or best yet stone form, enemies will still take their full reflected damage. Now this was the concept for my evoker build. I was going to play it on X max, so I needed to find a way to counter triple Typhon. I was scratching my head with that. He's kind of my nemesis. Um, I have trouble with one of him sometimes, so three of him was going to be a nightmare. Well, if you watch the start of this video, you'll see the end result of that. All you have to do is stack a bunch of reflect, go into stone form, he drops meteors on you. The meteors do so much asinine damage that pretty much just kills him right off the bat. And then there's block. I think block and armor are going to be the staples of my next reflect character, a juggernaut which I think is probably the ultimate form of a Reflect character, maybe. But of course, if you block damage, you do not take the damage. You don't take any damage. You can watch my Conqueror build guide video. Again, check the chat or the comment section of that video to see some timestamps. I put a timestamp up to talk about shield mechanics. It's a great visual. You can check out that video to see how shield block works and everything like that. But if you block damage in full, you don't take any of the damage, they still take full reflected damage. So these results are all very consistent. The damage order is completely ignored in terms of the enemy taking reflected damage. So that's all when reflect damage applies. It applies on every single kind of attack. It does not discriminate on your armor or any of your defenses or even if you get hit. One last note. On damage sources, I say the conclusion is that you're safe to scale all of your defenses, and in fact I encourage that, especially your melee defenses. Uh, things like Grandmaster Archers, the typical hard-hitting nemesis of most players, those kill themselves in like two hits. They're not a big deal. It's really the chunky melee guys that are going to overwhelm you. So you're safe to scale all of your defenses except for CC. CC is the bane of your existence. You don't want to CC enemies at all. So going back to Athena's Mirrored Shield, I actually used this on my build, and I think it was the biggest mistake I made on my character. Yeah, the shield gives 44% damage reflected, which is great. That's static. It's always there. But it also has a 10% chance of 2 to 3 seconds of stun retaliation. That means there's a 10% chance when an enemy hits me that they'll be stunned. This thing will kill you. I'm not kidding. That will be the end of your life. If you're, if you're depending on stone form like I am to kill those really hard-hitting enemies before you come out of stone form, they could spend half the time that you're in stone form stunned because they're hitting you. If they're stunned, they're not taking damage. That means when you're out of your stone form, they're ready to kill you, and they will, and they do it over and over and over again. Trust me, take it from me, any form of CC is the absolute worst anti-synergy on a reflect character. So next we're going to talk about what scales reflected damage. We talked about retaliate and how they didn't put any retaliate scalers in the game, it just happens with your level. And we talked about how reflect doesn't work that way. There aren't any conventional ways, there are no percent modifiers that aid in your damage reflected, you just simply stack the modifiers and keep stacking them. But in case you're wondering, the global modifier percent total damage, if you see that on any of your items, that does not actually apply to reflected damage. I tested that. What about reduced resistances then? You can, of course, re reduce enemy res in a number of different ways in this game. And I'm happy to report that, yes, if you reduce enemy resists, they will take a larger amount of reflected damage. Of course, when they deal damage, they take damage of that same element back to themselves. So I tested this against the, uh, what are they, the Fire Matrons in Surtur's Palace Act 5. On Legendary, those guys are immune to fire damage, and they deal pure fire damage. So if you don't have any reduced res, but you have a ton of reflect gear, you'll never be able to kill them, because they're dealing damage back to themselves that they're immune to. But I use Study Prey on these mobs, and was happy to report that they do take damage after using Study Prey. Anyway, reduced resistances does work to scale your damage. I'll talk about one more anti-synergy real quick. Uh, we discussed with Athena's Mirror Shield why CC is bad and how that's an anti-synergy. There's one more big anti-synergy, and it affects builds. So we'll talk about builds later, but... 
if you have fatigue attached to your plague or if you have ravages of time on your death chill aura both of those things reduce enemy damage i don't remember what the exact verbiage is but you can look at those tooltips that actually does have an impact on reflected damage and it's what exactly what you would expect if those things make the enemy do 50 percent less damage to you they're going to take half the reflected damage that's pretty much the only assumption I had about Reflect that ended up being true. You know, everything else was completely wrong that I thought. This one is actually logical. If you reduce the enemy's damage, they should deal less damage and Reflect. You'd think that's how it would work for the damage order as well, but it doesn't. Just know that in that case, if you reduce enemy damage with that exact modifier, that exact verbiage, they will actually deal less Reflect damage back to themselves. So that's a huge detriment when it comes to building any Reflect character that bases around spirit or that bases around nature. And this kind of sucks because I wanted to make a Reflect character that was spirit defense that utilized life leech retaliation. I, thought, I think that would have been a really cool build. But unfortunately, my testing proved that it's just too much of a detriment to use death chill. And you can't not use death chill if you're spirit. And you can't not use plague if you're nature, right? However, this malice does not apply to percent less damage from creatures. You know that thing you find on all, all that swap gear that you keep in your inventory because it's so overpowered in this game, like Oedipus armor or Shadow Wall or Boar Hunter Shield or Ritual Necklaces. Those things don't affect your retaliated damage. They still work as in reducing your damage from the creature, but they still take that raw, unmitigated damage back. That's one of those things that's tied to the damage order. So don't worry, that's a safe attribute. It's not going to affect your damage reflected back to the enemy. The rest of the methods to scale your reflected damage are unconventional. Again, there's no item properties that help you with this sort of thing, just anti-synergies and minus resistances. So these are going to be things like uh, making sure that chunky monsters hit you. So if you're dancing around the map trying to kill things, uh, it might be worthwhile to save your earth shield, whatever it's called, molten shield. I don't remember, stone form. It might be worthwhile to save your stone form when after you've gathered a lot of big, hard-hitting creatures. Because you're, they're going to hit you, you'll absorb all of the damage, and they'll kill themselves in the snap of a finger. They, they die so incredibly quickly. So just being aware of the big, hard-hitting creatures making sure you play around that, use it to your advantage. Grandmaster archers, like I said, die in two hits. It's hilarious. Typhon kills himself instantly. Barmanu kills himself instantly. Um, just as a funny aside, someone clipped this on my Twitch. Don't do this when you're fighting Barmanu. Um, you're going to want to bait out his stun before trying to do the stone form combo. Otherwise, he's going to drop a bajillion meteors on you. So that was a, a lesson in hubris for me. So you can't be too headlong. You have to be cautious, but at the same time, you do want to set up these big damage situations, not just to get the sweet, juicy triple Typhon kill. Incidentally, those ty that Typhon footage at the beginning of the video, I think that was my legendary kill, maybe? That didn't take any takes. That was my first take as the only kill. And guess what happened in epic mode? The same exact thing. I didn't have to fish for that footage at all. That was just naturally what the character does. He's a beast machine. Reflect is OP. So one last way to scale your reflected damage is to be aware of shotguns. Normally, being aware of shotguns means not getting shotgunned. That still remains true. But with the knowledge of the damage order and how it works, and especially with percent absorb and high resists and things like that, if you can get away with getting hit with a shotgun, you know you can survive. You can kill enemies extremely quickly with that retaliated damage. By the way, you can retaliate dots. Did I, did I mention that? I think I mentioned that. So certain enemies will kill themselves horrendously fast, hilariously fast, if you let them shotgun themselves. So it's all about kind of maneuvering your character and playing in such a way that baits out damage when you know you can take it while also realizing that you're not immortal and maybe tapering some of those 
awesome high moments with caution a little bit. You don't want to die too much trying to chase the dream. All right, so now that we know how Reflect works mechanically, we're going to talk about some items and then some build ideas to wrap up the video. First thing I want to mention is this Athena's Mirrored Shield. I used this on my playthrough and I mentioned how bad it is. This damage reflected the 44%. Amazing, really good. Unfortunately, this stun retaliation completely kills the character, uh, or at least the item. So at least for me, I would never equip this. Uh, if you're building a Reflect character, this is a definite anti-synergy no matter how you cut it. It might help you survive, you think, in a way, but it also doesn't help you survive. You survive by killing enemies really, really quickly. You survive by careful pulling. You don't want to ever rely on this form of damage, so why would you let it block your build and make your build worse? So I wouldn't recommend using Athena's. Try to see the silver lining in that. Now you have room for Ionius, right? Everyone has room for Ionius. And getting something like Ionius with its better resistances helps buy your way into the ice scale set. So I call this a set, it's not really a set, it's just a, some gear that drops off the Ichthians in Act 5, it's new with Ragnarok. And unfortunately you can't get the legendary piece to drop. You can get the normal and the epic, uh, but there's a bug in the loot tables, I guess, that prevents the ice scale legendary gear from dropping all the helm, the boots, the gloves, the chest, doesn't matter. Someone in my chat did some digging and found that out after I had grinded for about two hours. Didn't find a single piece. So I don't believe that's RNG. Uh, I believe you just can't get the legendary gear. Hopefully the devs will fix that, but that doesn't matter. Um, as crazy as 500% is, 350 is also insane. And again, you can get the helm, the boots, the chest, and the gloves. They all do this. They all have chance to avoid damage reflected, an open prefix, and an open suffix. Again, this is a monster infrequent. So you can get this thing to roll hollowed as a prefix, a mortal as a suffix. It can give you all sorts of resists if you're lucky. And this is really the staple, I think, of most reflect builds nowadays. Before, you, have, you used to have to rely on your build. Now you can get away with just stacking ice scale gear. And by the way, all of these percentages stack this 15% chance of 350% damage reflected can stack with the same effect on chest pieces, on the gloves, it stacks with the flat on Athena's Mirrored Shield if you're using that, or the flat on Trance of Empathy. By flat, I mean just the static, you know, X% percent damage reflected. And it stacks with the proc on Arcane Mirror. It also stacks with Golem's Heart, which we'll look at in a bit. All of these things stack, so not only do the, is the probability of a reflected damage occurrence happening on one particular hit, but all of them can happen at once, too. Uh, if I were to try to illustrate that, think of it like a 100-sided dice. Pretend all three of these helms were different slots equipped on my character at the same time. So each of these would roll a 100-sided dice individually. Let's say that 1 to 15 is the sweet spot. That's where you score the damage reflected. Each of these could roll 40 or 50, in which case you get none of the damage reflect. Maybe this one rolls 15, these roll 50, so then you get the 350 for that hit. Or they could all roll 15, in which case you get 350 plus 500 plus 200 for the hit. That is astronomical. That's important because things like Golem's Blood, which we'll look at right now, this is a new charm, drops off the reflect annoying golem things in Act 5. This thing has a 50% chance of happening. This was another assumption I was wrong about. I felt like these things wouldn't stack like that. I felt like there's no way that would be absurdly overpowered. Turns out I'm wrong on all fronts. This thing actually just is absurdly overpowered. All of reflect is just stupidly overpowered. I couldn't conceive of this happening, but... That's how it is. So I was actually afraid that this 50% would actually sort of block out the RNG on the other ones. Like you can only get one of these effects per hit. But nope, you can get all of them. So if you have room on your rings and amulets, then you can put a golem's heart on. And you can use items like Ionius to buy your way into them. You don't want to sacrifice on your defenses. So if you're looking for a good ring or amulet to apply that golem's heart to, 
I would recommend a prismatic amulet. So let's look at that. You could start fighting this thing as early as level 11. It comes in multiple magnitudes. The highest magnitude you're going to get is 12% static damage reflected. That's pretty good. The resists are really nice. And this is just a prefix, so you can also get of immortality to get a lot of health on the suffix. And you can put a demon's or a golem's blood on this thing, or golem's heart, whatever that thing was called. So that would be a good option for your necklace if you're building more of a tanky reflect character than... Maybe you want to use an Essence of the Sticks instead to scale your armor. But you have options. These are just my favorite things. Of course, the absolute staple of the build is going to be this artifact, Arcane Mirror. It's a pretty annoying artifact recipe to farm for. But just look at the bonuses. Energy Leech Resistance is really, really useful. If you're using a buff like Trance of Empathy, anything that costs uh, energy over time... Like, I think it has an active energy cost, right? Yes, it does. One active energy cost per second. That means if you lose all of your energy, it strips the buff. You don't want to lose Trance of Empathy if you're trying to kill melee, if you're sitting in stone form and you got Trance up, but just before you hit stone form, you were mana drained. Now you'll keep stone form because it doesn't have an active energy cost, but you're not going to have your Trance. That might be the difference between life and death, because you're not going to kill those melee units that are hitting you and are probably going to kill you when your stone form ends. The same problem we had with Athena's Mirrored Shield. So anyway, having your capped energy leech is really good. This is actually over-capped. You can only get 80% of all resists, even secondary resists. And the really, really good thing about this is the granted skill. So it's a 12 second duration, it happens upon taking damage, it's just a proc, it has a 2 minute recharge. But for this 12 seconds you get a static 300% damage reflected. This thing is insane. It's going to appear as a buff kind of in the top left corner of your screen underneath your character. And you'll also see it appear on your character, there's a graphic, it kind of looks like a heat shield. So when you see either of those things you want to go crazy. You just want to Gather as many mobs as you can within that 12 seconds. Go straight for Typhon, kill the boss. A lot of my boss strategies on X-Max, since bosses were tripled and I couldn't tank their damage, was just waiting for this thing to proc and then going in and using my uh, stone form. So that's definitely something you can replicate. But basically, uh, you know, the usage you're going to get out of Arcane Mirror is totally dependent on how well you can manipulate this mirror wall when it procs. It's got a long cooldown, yeah, but when it procs, everything dies. It's a great joy. So I think that's all of the items that I really like. Um, since I was playing a character that doesn't use a shield, so I wasn't playing defense, I don't have any of these shield skills, I was able to equip a Blessing of the Moray, which is right here. It's a throwing weapon. And this is really nice because, one, it gives resistance, and two, it gives minus recharge. So there are things that provide an anti-synergy like we talked about Ravages of Time and Fatigue on Nature Mastery. Recharge is a definite synergy. You should aim for at least 50% recharge, I think, on most characters. I mean, if you're playing Earth Mastery, you want Stone Form up to get that combo as often as possible. You know, the difference between 24 and 12 seconds is, you know, 12 seconds. I did the math, but that's huge. Uh, likewise, if you're playing Dream, uh, is there anything on Dream? Uh, yes, actually, uh, Distortion Field. So any procs on your Mastery are affected by Recharge. Distortion Field is a great, great defensive utility, and it doesn't harm reflected damage at all. You can see it just gives you flat absorption, percent damage absorption. Those things only aid in your defense, and on X-Max, this thing's going to proc pretty consistently. And if you can get 50% recharge, then you can get almost 100% uptime on this. It's not quite. That 5% chance of activating is pretty low. But, you know, if you're using Defiance on Rally, then you want as many rallies as you can. So recovery is a huge, huge tool. Just note, though, that it's this Ice Scale gear that's the most impressive. Uh, this is the gear that was added with Ragnarok that just catapults Reflect into the Cosmos. It's just insane. And because of this, you no longer have to rely on your mastery to determine your builds. You can just really get any masteries as long as they don't have too many anti-synergies. 
and you can just rely on ice scale gear for your reflect. And because it's not that amazing with resists or health or DA, you can use overpowered items like Ionius the shield to buy your way into it. So let's talk about builds then. I have four builds up here on this tab. These are going to be, I think, the most popular reflect builds, but just note that you can build pretty much anything. So this is the build I went for. So it's an evoker. It's Earth Dream. Um, I really like Earth because of the stone form combo. We talked about the damage order. 100% damage absorption is actual damage immunity. You cannot die if you have 100% DA. 100% damage absorption. But that doesn't affect your reflected damage at all. So just, you know, standing in stone form and getting meteored upon is just the greatest feeling in the universe. I'm sure it's not actually the greatest feeling if you're in the stone form. That's probably pretty miserable. But watching it on the screen is just a joy. I personally find it annoying to keep up heat shield. That 60 second, uh, or um, excuse me, the 100 second duration is extremely short on my speed settings. And it always seems to fall off at the wrong time, Murphy's Law and all that. But another benefit to Earth Mastery is that you level so quickly. Uh, the, the early and mid game, normal and epic mode are so fast between Ring of Flame and Eruption. It's just absurd. It does not suffer at all. And the synergy with the Dream Mastery, of course, is Trance of Empathy. I know the more popular choices are Convalescence and, and Trance of Wrath, but in this case you can get 60% on the base for damage reflection. I think when you plus 4 it, it's something like 85. That's a lot of static damage reflect. That's enough to carry a character in terms of reflect damage pretty far into the game on its own. So that was the pretty much the only thing I wanted with Dream. Again, Distortion Field is a great defensive tool. Obviously, DA is good in Premonition. Temporal Flux, surprisingly effective. Now, of course, the chance to avoid projectiles is, is only a benefit to you, and it meshes very well with this Ice Scale gear. You're going to get, let's say, six of these 9% pieces, since you can't get the Legendary version. So that's, you know, 9 times 4 is 36, plus a Temporal Flux, which is going to be, I think, 24 or something like that when it's maxed out. So that's 50% chance to avoid projectiles right there. You don't really need that. Your biggest nemesis is going to be melee damage, take it from me. But the slow res is also really nice. If you didn't know, every ability has a cast time. So you don't want to whiff your stone form if you're slowed by some weapon or death chill aura or a frost attack or something like that. You don't want to be too slow getting your stone form off. So having slow res someone somewhere on your build, whether that comes from Temporal Flux or Ajax or something like that, is very, very useful. In this case, Temporal Flux just saves you in Ajax, basically. The total speed is also useful. Cast speed is included there. Run speed is really nice with a Reflect build. So overall, a solid combo. I went with this because I feel like it's the best budget um, Reflect character. I did inherit gear, but I wanted to have a very solid early game, mid game, and a very solid late game. I do think that this character has the worst late game, the end and end game of all of the combinations, but it's the most well-rounded. It has clearly baked in, always up static Reflect, which is really nice, and this combo that you can pull off. So the next build here is Templar. I think this is going to be one of the better. Um, I wouldn't rate it at the very top. I think the very top is going to be the Juggernaut. But what's good about this one, and this is a classic, Templar is just an amazing character all around. So you wouldn't want to use Blessing of the Moray eh, on this character. You'd want to make use of Pulverize and Shield Smash, is that right? Yeah, Shield Smash. Not necessarily for more damage. I mean, Shield Smash isn't going to do you much good. But Pulverize is. Skill Disruption is an amazing defensive utility, and in fact, you're going to want Disruption here as well. So if we max this out, we get 4 seconds of Skill Disruption. When that's plus 4, it's probably 6 seconds or something like that on 4 or 5 targets. That's absurd. That's like 6 seconds that an enemy can't use their skills or special abilities. You do If you charge a Centaur Elder or something like that, and this doesn't have a stun, does it? has one second of stun. So that's three seconds where all he can do is auto attack you. That's probably long enough for him to kill himself, right? So this is extremely useful. So is of course Pulverize. 
you're not trying to scale your own damage, so I wouldn't get stuff like Distort Reality. Stuns are an anti-synergy, so Temporal Rift is a no-go. You'll find that most skills you can't get when building these characters. You're going to have a, a huge abundance of skills. You're going to run out very early. You just can't get most of this stuff. It doesn't help you. But anyway, you get this extra form of damage absorption in the form of Colossus. This thing has a 10 active energy cost per second, though. So make sure that you have that Arcane Mirror equipped. You're going to lose your Colossus all the time, so don't rely on it in the early, or in the early game. And of course you get all the other nice defense-y things. Unfortunately, Iron Will does not have slow res. So you probably still need an Ajax, not with a Templar because you have Temporal Flux. But with uh, other builds like the Juggernaut, maybe. But really it's just stacking this Defiance here. That's tied to your Rally. It's another, I think, 60%. So that's probably 85 at plus 4. With the other 85 from Trance of Empathy. So the combo here is clear. I would just use Rally to save your life. I wouldn't use it to force the extra damage, unless you really know what you're doing. So just use Rally to save your life. And then after you get, after that, you get this extra bit of damage reflection. That's actually a really nice concept. Likely, if you had to use Rally to save your life, you were being overwhelmed with damage. Good news, if you're being overwhelmed with damage, someone's about to die with Defiance. So that's kind of a nice synergy built in. And critically, crucially with defense, is you actually get to scale your shields. Very easy to max out your shield recovery. You can use, uh, if you're going for Ionius, the way I would, I would do this and the way I plan to do this is to get a sword. What is this sword? It's something Prince. There you go. Sword of the Glauberg Prince. Again, I don't care about damage, so this base is inconsequential. It's a new Ragnarok item. I believe it's epic mode. Yes, it is. And it gives you the rest of that shield recovery. Shield recovery stacks at 90. And you get some more avoidance, which is nice synergy. Increased experience, who cares, right? Total speed, that's cast speed, run speed. Those things help a lot. Overall, I'd say this is a very solid build. It might be a little bit difficult to level, though. I think it would be kind of annoying. I mean, I guess if you're an expert at leveling with Dream, it's fine. They have some really nice tools to sort Reality, Phantom Strike, Trance of Wrath. That can carry them through the early game. Just note that you're going to want to transition out of pretty much all of those things. You can only make use of very few things. By the way, pets are a very big anti-synergy. You'll probably find that out on your own, but they distract enemies' attention, and often you don't want that. Third build, then, is the Juggernaut. I think this is the one that I would consider the ultimate character in the game, using the most overpowered mechanics, which is Reflect, and the most defensible, most immortal build. And I call it the most immortal build for a couple of reasons. One, you get to utilize shield since you are defense, but you get to stack Rally, which gives you a big flat armor bonus to all of your pieces of armor, with Stone Skin which gives you another big flat armor bonus to all of your armor. And then you can get pieces of gear kind of like um, Essence of the Sticks, if I can find it, Sticks. Which gives you this nice 30% armor protection since it's on a necklace. That applies to all of your armor pieces individually. And it's armor protection, not absorption. So just to make that distinction. And of course it gives all these nice Ionius level defenses here with resists. So again, using an item like this, I can buy my way into more ice scale gear. That's the whole goal. So you can do something like that with, the, with this build. That's one reason why it's immortal. The second reason is because it can rotate stone form with rally. So if your rally's on cooldown, it's likely you can stone form soon. If both of those are on cooldown, it's likely you have a potion. And with recovery, it's just going to be insane. You're going to constantly have something to press to save your life. Nothing can kill you with this build. You're going to have the most armor scaling of any class in the game. This combo is the best with utilizing armor. You're going to have full access to all of the shield defenses. And from my experience before, I'm telling you, melee mobs are the biggest enemy. And this is the best build for surviving melee hits. That's the whole reason I'd go for this build. Again, don't get pets. You don't want a tank. 
you are the tank. You want enemies to kill themselves. You still get some reflect. It's only tied to defiance, so you lose the nice passive static reflect from Trance of Empathy. That's okay. Again, this is going to do really well with high scale gear. And it's got the really strong starter to carry you to Act 5 with Ring of Fire and Eruption. So it'll have a very good early and mid game too. So this fourth build, uh, I think I called it one of the better builds. It's not. This fourth build is actually an example of a failed build, at least in concept. So it's here to show off some anti-synergies. So you might be baited into Storm Mastery because it has this reflection ability. 31% chance of 162 damage reflected. That's about in line with Trance of Empathy and Defiance in terms of overall average effectiveness. It is tied to this annoying 100 second duration shield. Uh, but anyway, this is really good. So you might say, well, that opens up Storm. Well, if we look at everything else, Storm Surge, all it does when it procs is it does damage and stuns. Stuns are an anti-synergy. We've already talked about that. Also, we've talked about the fact that you don't need damage with this build. You don't need any damage. Reflect takes care of everything. Literally everything in the game dies to reflect. You might have to reduce resistances to a couple of mobs, but I found that you can skip those very few mobs and it's no big deal anyway. But the biggest and best tool for stone uh, storm mastery, which is obscured visibility and squall, you can make use of the impaired aim. That's really good. But unfortunately, ah, reduced damage. We talked about that. This is going to reduce the reflected damage. If you see this exact verbiage, you want to stay away from it, unfortunately. Yeah, you're going to stay alive a little bit better. Actually, a lot better. But the reflected damage is going to be scaled so poorly by this. It's just going to straight multiply all of that raw reflected damage by, in this case, 0.7. Once you get this thing plus 4, it's more like 0.5. That's going to neuter your reflect, so you don't want that at all. And again, you don't really need the impaired aim. You'd rather have the other one, Fumble. Because you're not worried about archers, you're worried about melee. And everything else in this build is either damage or stuns. You have this stupid uh, wisp, you can't use that, that's an anti-synergy. This has a stun on it, anti-synergy, anti-synergy here. The slow is also an anti-synergy. You want enemies to connect with you for the most part, so slowed movement. Slowed attack is definitely an anti-synergy. And that leaves Spellbreaker. Awesome tool, but not enough. Just these two things, that's not enough for a mastery, in my opinion. You can use it, but you're going to lose the theme of Storm just by having Spellbreaker and Energy Shield. If you really want Spellbreaker, you can get that through items. We're using uh, this Ragnarok calculator, so props to the authors. This is a Jolly Green Fox, Bodhi Bodhi, uh, and company. So anyway, that's all I have to say about this video. Hopefully you found it insightful. And I'm going to be following up this video with my actual Evoker build guide. So if you want to see this concept in action for the Evoker, I'll be talking more in depth about that class. And I think eventually I'll play a Juggernaut on stream. Of course, the stream is the best way to get a hold of me if you want to ask questions. I do a lot of mechanics testing. I like to talk about the game. I like to talk about builds. Come ask questions. Come hang out. Chatting really helps, gives me stuff to comment on. Otherwise, I got more YouTube content coming out, so stand by for that, and thanks for watching.